I'm delighted to be here with Michael Alani Peckham, who is part of our youth team, part of our students, part of uh, so many areas of the life of HTV. He's a connect group leader, been involved in HTV for eight years. And Michael is a scientist. Uh, he's doing his PhD. He's going to be uh, a doctor very soon. Do his doctorate will be completed. Uh, but Michael, talk first of, of all about your scientific research, because you're researching the whole area of cancer, aren't you, caused by asbestos. Just say yeah. a little bit about that. Yeah, exactly. So I'm looking at uh, mesothelioma. So that is asbestos cancer. So this is a cancer that's caused by anyone who's come into contact with asbestos. You breathe it in. Um, it takes something between 20 to 40 years for the cancer to actually develop. So for a lot of people, they'll be quite old in age when they actually do get it. And yeah. Mike, how far are you into your PhD now? So as of uh, this week, it will be three years. Um, and I'm in the stage now where I'm writing up the thesis and hopefully in six months, hopefully in September, I would have completed it, done my, my final assignment. And yeah, I'll get the title of doctor, hopefully. So you're a scientist, but you're also a Christian. Now talk about yeah. your, your, how did, how did your faith come about? Well, it's mainly through my parents. So I was always brought up in a Christian household. Um, and yeah, we were taught everything. We went to Sunday school, but it was only really when I went to HDB and got involved with youth that I came to that kind of decision and that point when I wanted to make the faith my own, when I had an encounter, um, actually on a youth weekend away, um, Tell me about that. What happened? Yeah, so this was years ago. Uh, so we went somewhere in the countryside. I can barely remember where it was. Um, but I was surprised by just how many youth were there. I had friends who I was getting to know a bit more. But yeah, there was one night we had like a worship night. And for some reason, I just had this very strange feeling. And it, it was it was later explained to me that this was like the felt presence of, of God um, or the Holy Spirit. Um, and it was quite... It was just overwhelming. It was kind of like just this this really warm feeling. A lot of emotion just came up and it's like, I don't understand what's happening to me, but it's like, this is actually just what it feels like to know God's love. Mm. And so it was from that point, I was like, okay, this thing is real and let's get serious about this. Because before it was just like, I'm Christian, but only really in, yeah, in title. I was being a moral person. I was, I was being a good person, but not specifically Christian. And I think that's the point where everything changed. Uh, yeah. So that's it. And what is, what difference has that made for you? Oh, everything. It, it affects everything that I do. It's, yeah, I think it's, it's funny because it's always been quite a journey or a cycle where there was that initial point where it's like, hey, this is real. And I'm getting to that stage now where it's like I'm constantly learning. So reading the Bible more, um, listening to talks and just understanding the person of Jesus and what he calls us to do as his followers. Um, so yeah, that, that just influences everything. So the way that I work, what I, the decisions I make at work, even like the idea of what I want to do for a career, um, the way I look at money, that it, it affects literally everything in my life. And if there's a point at which I don't know something, I just have to like pray for wisdom or just read the Bible. And that's it. God, God is with us. Like, yeah, you just can't forget it. So you run a connect group, you help with the students. Yeah, so when I first stopped, like joined HTB and was getting comfortable, like coming to know more people, it was mainly to get really plugged in with the community that I was helping out on these, all these different areas. Um, but you soon find like helping out and serving is something that we're called to. So it's, it's this thing of, out of this knowledge of like our salvation or just like what the Bible tells us is that there are works that come with it. Like we don't earn our salvation, but it's just an out, it's like a fruit of it is that we do these certain works. So yeah, serving has always been quite close to me. Um, so I've served on, well, yeah, currently leading Connect Group, um, HDB Youth, I'm involved with that. Um, students, while I was still studying, so my undergrad and my master's, I was very involved with students. Um, I helped out with the homeless shelter. Um, so this was the day shelter that where we served yeah. breakfast. And um, last time we did something like this together, we were on a panel yeah. about science and faith together. And um, you're in a very good position to talk about that because a lot of people think, don't they? A lot of people think there's a, that you can't be a scientist and a Christian. Yeah. Um, uh, wh why, why is it that you don't see any conflict between science 
and your Christian faith? Yeah, I think it's it's because they they tend to answer like almost different questions. Um, but even more than that, one sometimes validates the other. So I remember specifically with um, when I was when I was in uh, doing my what was it my bachelor's, I had a lecturer and he, he made this really interesting point when he told us like that the building blocks of DNA. So these are nucleotides that they were found in clay, that clay could be analyzed and you find these these building blocks. And I remember hearing this and I was like, that's really interesting because it's like the creation story is like we're, we're made out of clay, breathe life into us. And it's this idea of that we're not completely like science isn't something that's completely separate of God. It's, it almost explains a lot of what God has done with the creation um, and the world that we're in. It explains what the world we're in is like. And yeah, it's it's this thing that I don't see them as being in in real conflict with one another. I think when you look deeply enough, you can see that actually these two things they coincide quite closely. And I think a long time ago within within the church, um, it was seen as such. It wasn't such a separated thing. It's only now in modern times that it's become very separate. This thing of science versus religion or faith or God. And has this year been for you, Michael? This year, oh, it's been. Um, it's, it's been very interesting. So it's, it's definitely been a few different cycles. So I think it was a, a time of really digging deep and being like, okay, this thing has happened to the whole world. Um, what does my faith mean? And kind of going from scratch and saying, okay, what do I believe and how does it affect the way that I live day to day? Whether I'm living with people or completely on my own, um, how does like what does this mean to me who is Jesus and yeah I think just taking that time I've now got into this stage where like connect group we've had like basically our best year yet um wow. even though we've been meeting over zoom yeah so that that's just because before we were meeting once every two weeks and now like as the pandemic hit we met weekly hmm. and that weekly touch point just made it so that like a lot of friendships got a bit deeper we caught up with each other more often prayed together and yeah it's been such a such a, a good year we've seen god do some some real miracles within the group and michael um the killing of george floyd what was mm -hmm. the impact um on you personally of that Ooh. so on me personally it, it was it was a lot to deal with um for yeah for months last year it, it was a shock to the world but these attitudes that we've seen even on the news in the last last few weeks um it's it's not new hmm. and i think that's the thing that was most disturbing i think it was useful for everyone to kind of share experiences and for this like on like this uh this call for education um just among the masses but it's, it's something that's it's, it's not new and that's that's what's most troubling about it and even now we see a year later like similar things are still happening i think people are quick to call it out now mm. um i think before maybe people were a bit shy to um but it seems like the uproar is still is, is still present um and i think that is a good thing i think this kind of unrest is sometimes it can be a bit destructive but it is um the heart of it is something which we need to preserve. It's the, it's the same heart that God would have, have for injustice, where he sees something that's not right and he corrects it. But I, I do like the fact that people are not happy to, to sit by and be complacent when there is injustice going on. And um, so I think that's one positive change that we've seen in the last year. And hopefully it's, it's something that we, we see more of. And is racism something that you've experienced personally? my parents faced a lot of issues with the neighbors who the young kids they were they must have been in their early teens and they were just racist to my parents and my siblings in what kind um, of way so it, it'd be just like different acts so either shouting name calling or different acts i remember there was a time when i was young i was a baby and i was sitting like in front of the tv in my pram or that little seat and yeah, someone from outside must have kicked a ball to kind of aim it at me. 
and that was something like my mom sees the ball and it was like a big issue that they kind of targeted me or even there was a time when someone kind of lit a cigarette or a firework and put it through our letterbox um, and it, it'd be things like that so quite big wow. acts of, of actual violence against us and how how do you respond to that in many cases if if you can't really rely on i guess yeah the institutions around you to to fix it or to to correct it like turning to god is 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 massive it must have just been a few months ago it was it was during the pandemic one of those boys that used to terrorize us um now he's he's grown up he's in his 30s um he came by the house and he knocked on our door and my dad came to the door and he, he was just talking to my dad and he apologized for all the stuff that he did when he was younger. And I was blown away by this because my mom was like laughing. She was like, oh, I, I want to go and meet him. Like, I want to see him. But yeah, he at some point just came around and he apologized. Wow. So that was like, yeah, that, that's the kind of thing that you can only say, okay, God had some kind of role in that. And what difference has your faith made, you think, Michael, in, in handling all these kind of issues? As Christians, we're called to forgive. Mm -hmm. So when this kind of issue comes about, um, the easy, uh, well, it's not really easy, but mm -hmm. the quick answer is to kind of forgive it and move on. Um, but there are times when you kind of have to, you have to fight for what's right. Yeah. So for me, it's, it's this thing of looking through the Bible and seeing, well, knowing what God's heart is on these issues and actually praying and being like, hey, God, what do you want me to do in this situation? Because my first response might be anger. It might be real, like, negative stuff. Um, but we're called to forgive. Mm -hmm. And so even that's painful. Um, and sometimes you don't want to because they may not deserve it in your eyes. Mm -hmm. um, my response is hopefully, hopefully to, to forgive them. Mm -hmm. um, and that doesn't, the, the annoying thing is, is that you, you don't really want to just roll over and be a pushover right. uh, in doing that. But to do it almost as a form of, I don't know, protest or activism, if possible. Um, but yeah, first things first is to forgive and then take the next step. If you need to confront them, confront them. Um, but yeah, first and foremost, you have to make sure that you're, you're in the right place with, with regards to God. Amazing, Michael. And we're so grateful, Michael, for all you do with the, all the different ministries, all the different ways you serve at HGB. I know so many people who are thankful to you for your ministry.